Hey there, RecTech family, Chef Greg here with you. We're inside the uh, showroom today. We're talking about knife sharpening and knife maintenance. We've had a lot of questions and comments over the last couple of weeks on what knives to use, what knives to buy, how do I do this, how do I do that? So you know what? We figured we'd take a break while we've got some uh, Lunder Broil cooking in the back and show you how it's done. First, let's talk about knife storage, okay? Um, here we have a magnetic block. I think it's, again, really easy if you're gonna display your knives in the kitchen. Um, go ahead and, and stash them in a magnetic block. You really wanna avoid throwing them in a drawer as they can kind of bang together. Uh, obviously, your, your edge will hit things and you'll, your knives will become dull. Um, again, whether your magnetic block on the, uh, on the wall or one of these freestanding um, uh, knife blocks, whatever you choose is great. Um, you can also have custom rolls made, leather sheets. Uh, leatherworker.com is a great thing to check that. They can custom uh, stamp your handle there for you. So if you wanna show up to your next barbecue contest in style, check them out, they do a great job. Um, this knife here is probably one of the more utilized knives kind of in your barbecue arsenal. Uh, it'll be this and a slicer. This is a boning knife. Um, you can pick these up at the big box store, super cheap. Uh, typically they come in a two pack for like 10 bucks. When they get dull, most people throw them out and buy a new one. Pairing knives, we don't see too much uh, in the barbecue world. If you're doing some uh, garnish work, um, you know, decorating your pork boxes, rib boxes, you might use this for some citrus fruits. But again, you don't see them too much. Kind of the um, piece de resistance, if you will, in any really good uh, kit is going to be a slicer. Okay, so typically they're really long, uh, very lightweight, nice and thin, super, super sharp. Again, this knife doesn't do any chopping, any cutting through bones. It's typically slicing. Um, uh, finished um, briskets and things like that, um, great great knife to use. When we talk about uh, sharpening, there's a couple ways to do that. So I typically sharpen on stones. You can have a, um, an electric sharpener or uh, belt driven units. You want to be really careful with those because they're very aggressive, okay? Especially those belt driven units, you might see sparks flying off your blade as you're sharpening those. They're removing a lot of metal. And a lot of times we don't have to remove a lot of metal to get a good edge. And you paid for a nice knife, you want to make sure it's around for a lifetime. So typically I use stones when I sharpen them. Okay. So the stones that I have here, I've got a couple different different ones to show. Uh, these are natural stones. Okay, so this one is uh, three inches wide, this one's two inches wide. Uh, this one's about 16,000 grit, this one here is about 8,000. Um, I've had these for probably about 15 years now. They're still in, in great use. These stones do require to be uh, soaked in water before use. So what you can do is um, about 10, 15 minutes before you're ready to sharpen your knife, go ahead and submerge those blocks in water. Uh, typically when bubbles stop flowing up, they're good to go. These here are glass stones, okay? So these are made by Shapton. These are designed to sharpen your really hard, um, I will say higher quality uh, blades. So again, uh, this comes into it's a 16,000 grit, 2,000 grit, and 500 grit. Uh, they come in, in all varieties of, of grits, but depending on your knives, uh, you might wanna uh, check them out here real quick too. And again, those are Shapton glass stones. So these here are not sharpening rods or sharpening sticks, okay? These are honing rods, and these are used a couple different ways. This is a ceramic rod, and this is your traditional steel rod. Uh, over time, when your knife uh, gets used, the edge, if you will, kind of comes a little deformed and almost grows teeth. What this does is help realign those teeth so that uh, as you're using the knife, it uh, is a little more sharp than before. So how do you use these? Very simple. Um, most people you'll see hold it up and slam the knife against the rod and come down. You really want to go backwards because what we're doing is the knife blade is kind of uh, rigid. We want to straighten those burrs out. So you actually strop away from you in nice, even, easy motions. You've got about a 15 degree angle, okay? I'm not being fast, I'm not slamming the knife against the rod. Best practice, if you do that before and after uh, every time you use your knife, you can extend the life of, of that edge, okay? So again, uh, ceramic rods tend to be a little more aggressive than um, your metal ones. And if these are really old, the teeth in the rod will actually wear down over time. So every couple years with use, it's definitely a good idea to pick up a, a new one. Okay, so we talked about our slicing knives. Kind of our chef's knives that we wanna use Pick out a couple different ones here to talk about real quick. So 
So this is a smaller chef's knife. This is about a seven inch blade. This is, can do anything. This can uh, do the work of a boning knife, a slicing knife, a chopping knife. It's a really high quality blade. This is made of a white Hitachi steel, so it's a really, really high quality steel. This is a six inch utility knife. This is used for, again, chopping, slicing, more intricate work. I like longer uh, pairing knives. I think they're a little more versatile versus those little four inch blades. Again, this is a VG10 stainless steel, so it's uh, very familiar in your shoe knives, which are popular as well. Now this is a Japanese boning knife, okay? And I prefer these because they're a little wider, a little thicker, a little more rigid. I think I've got a little more control uh, when I'm boning things like pork butts, chickens, uh, if I'm kind of get in and out of rib meat versus something like this, I think I can be a little more accurate with this. So this is a, an Asian style uh, boning knife. Again, this is a um, R2 tool, tool steel. So it's a very beautiful uh, Damascus blade. And again, this is a 10 and a half inch slicing knife. It only ever slices meat. There is no chopping involved in this one here too. Um, so when it's time to sharpen your blades, and we'll go ahead and, and do this one for the demo. Uh, the Shapton Glassstones come with a nice um, sharpening uh, frame. Uh, this is portable too because the stones stack in the bottom of this. So we'll start with the most aggressive stone, which is 500 grit. And the beauty of these stones is they don't require to be soaked. So they're typically splash and go. So what you can do is you can have a, uh, a spray bottle or even just take your hand and kind of spritz some water on there. Okay, you just need a little water for lubrication. It's always good to have a nice clean towel with you. So when you sharpen, especially the first time you can pick up stones in any hardware store around, typically it's easier to sharpen away from the cutting edge, so you sharpen backwards. So the angle you're looking for is if you lay that blade down flat, if you were to stack about two dimes underneath, that'll give you about 18 degrees, and that's a great uh, starting place. So what you do is with nice, even, light pressure is just sharp pull back on the blade in nice, even strokes. Make sure you go from heel to tip the entire way. And if you look, you can actually see, it's probably hard on camera, but a little bit of gray on top of that stone, that's a little bit of the steel being worn away. So again, this is a, a less aggressive way to sharpen your knives um, versus belt driven units. And those electric ones that you have, please don't ever use those on your knives. They do nothing but eat steel, okay? And as you get more comfortable uh, sharpening your knives, you can also go back and forth. The challenge there is typically it's harder to keep the same angle in the push and the pull stroke, okay? And what you can do when you sharpen your blade, make sure it's even. So if you're gonna spend one minute aside or 30 seconds aside, make sure you flip it over and get the same amount of pressure and consistency, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and wipe this and again, if you look, you can hold it up to the light, you should be able to see a very even polished edge all the way across. If you start seeing a little wavy, it means you're kind of um, rocking your blade a little bit and you're not getting a nice flat edge. Uh, chef trip there, if you take a Sharpie marker and just kind of paint the cutting edge, as you sharpen your blade, you can really see exactly where that is and that Sharpie will, will just wear right off. Okay, so anywhere, there's no nicks in this blade, so it doesn't need to spend a lot of time on the 500 grit. We'll go ahead and move up to the 2000 grit. And again, same process. This might take three to five minutes. Typically, I touch my knives up every few weeks or so. I find knife sharpening very therapeutic. If you don't uh, find it comfortable sharpening your own knives, I would definitely look up. There's a lot of mail order services. If you live in larger cities, uh, there's people that do mobile sharpening. They have trucks that come by and check it out. Um, and then most of the times they only charge between three and five dollars a knife. So it's a great investment, especially if you're not comfortable sharpening your own knife. Okay. A couple passes, you can go ahead and give it a wipe. If you want to test, typically I do a three finger test. I'm not going to run my knives down the edge of the finger, but I basically want to put it on the edge and kind of feel for a little burr, a little drag. And if I have a nice consistent edge all the way across, I can feel that. Okay, so a little more work here. And again, your higher quality knives um, are rated by something called Rockwell. So the higher the number of Rockwell, it's the higher, uh, the harder the steel is. Okay, so this knife here is a rock wool of about 64. Typically your whooshed off knives, uh, more of your stamped everyday knives are around the rock wool of uh, 54 to 56, some of them 58. Um, it makes a big difference making sure you can get a, 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 an edge that's not just sharper but more durable. 
Okay. So now we'll take, strop this on a 16,000 grit, and this will still remove a little bit of steel, but it'll make that edge a mirror polish. Okay. You can also do the same thing. You can strop on um, leather with compounds. I can also take a little sheet of newspaper on the top of this and do some final polishing if you want. Actually, the abrasives that are found in um, the ink do a great job stropping as well. Okay, but we're going to do some nice final. Okay, wipe this up. Take a look at that edge. It's beautiful. It's a mirror edge. Razor sharp. So next time you've cooked that perfect brisket on your RT680, please make sure your knife is good and sharp so you can get beautiful pencil wide uh, slices of brisket. If there's any more questions or things you guys want to know, let us know. Uh, post a, a question on the Facebook page. We'll, we'll definitely try to incorporate those in, whether it's little demos like this about how to get ready to cook, maintain your tools, or things you want to see and cook on the, uh, on the Rectech, let us know. Again, we're here for you. Let us know. Try sharpening yourself.